Flips like this. Another Chris. Yeah, I mean. Good on you. I win. I can left mark him for you. Oh yeah. See him right there. Next one. Are even more satisfying when they get you comments like this. Well, achieving exactly why I don't play anymore. Imagine having that small of a. Shadow ban for you now. It's playing too well to be in ordinary people's lobby. You need to be moved into a lobby of dirty people. This guy is using aimbot. It's sad to see how many people think that this is cheating when in reality it's just organized and specific practice. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to have a aim like this in very easy and simple steps. Maybe then those noobs will actually start to think and use their brains instead of screaming aimbot every time they see a flick or a few no recall shots. It's all about taking out the bad habits and replacing them with good ones. And by the way, this video will help you out in any shooting game that you play, not just COD. I just happen to coach and play in COD, so I'll be using it as an example. And if you're practicing for Call of Duty, I advise purchasing multiplayer and practicing an offline match versus bots or by yourself depending on the exercise but if you don't want to get multiplayer hopping into a br and dmz and going to a like a ruler area in the map where nobody's there and practicing with your friends also works just as fine all right starting off with how to find the perfect sense you want to pick any random target in any video game that you play in my case it's going to be this green crosshair and what we are going to do is we're going to strafe to the right and to the left while trying to keep the crosshair on the target as much as possible now you want to do this at a close range and then you want to do this at a medium and a long range. Of course, it will be a little bit harder to do so at those ranges. Now, if your crosshair is staying on the target 80, 90 or 100% of the time, then the sense that you have is good for now. And why I'm saying for now, you might want to change it on later. And I'll go into more details about that towards the end of the exercise. Hmm. Now, let's say your sense is actually too high. What's going to happen is as you're strafing to the left and you're trying to move your cursor to the right, it will overshoot. Once you notice that you're overshooting your crosshair, or I'm going to the right and it's overshooting to the left. That's when you have a too much of a high sense. You want to tone it down a bit and then try doing this exercise again. Now, if you have too much of a low sense, what's going to happen is as you're shaping to the left, it's going to go to the left with you and struggle to keep up. If you're going to the right, it's going to struggle keeping up and going more to the right. Now, why did I say for now? Once you find a sense that's comfortable for you, you can stay with it for the rest of your life. It's totally fine. But if you want to go towards those snappy aim botish flicks then you might want to have a medium or a high sense at least unless you want to like be using your whole arm when you're a mouse and keyboard player as for controllers you actually need to go for a high sense moving on to centering or crosshair placement two different words for the same lesson now listen guys although this lesson is basically two two and a half exercises and it's really simple to understand it is the most important one out of everything Ask any pro coach, any pro player, any FPS aim trainer. They will tell you that centering is what will make you a pro for the most part. So starting off with exercise one. If you watch your own clips or your own gameplay and you notice that your aim is towards the ground most of the time, that's the biggest problem that you need to work on. And the solution is really simple. Just make sure that every time you play, you're consciously focusing on keeping your aim at the center level of the screen. Just start off by putting it somewhere in the center, like it could be a little bit to the up, a little bit down, it's okay. Just work on raising it from here to somewhere over here. I would advise either hopping into a multiplayer or uh, the BR or DMZ map and just putting on your favorite music and vibing to it while keeping your crosshair at this level all the time. Now moving on to exercise two. After you got the habit of keeping your aim at the centered level, we want to start centering and aiming based on where the enemy can be. And that can be broken down into two different parts. The first one is centering your aim based on where the enemy can be. And if it's only one spot and you know they're going to peek out from there. So let's say you know that the enemy is in this corner right here. In that case, there's only one spot that he can come out from, which is this door. So I'm going to center my aim at this level and just keep moving around and waiting for him to peek out. out. Now that's in case I know where the enemy is. Now let's say I am in this room. I do not know where the enemy is, but I hear them. In this case, let's say the enemy might pop up from behind this box. They might pop up from this corner, from this door, from this door, or from this angle. So what I do is I just don't aim at once at one area and just hope that they're going to come out from there. Now, that's kind of going to get you killed a lot of the times. What you're going to do is you're going to try to find the center point between all of these, which is like somewhere right here and aim down sight and wait from there. Now, for example, when I aim down sight, my FOV is a little bit smaller. So 
but I won't aim downside. I'll just wait like this. That way I can see this point, this point, this point, and this point. And let's say this point doesn't exist. In that case, I will aim downside because I can see here, 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 and here. And notice I'm aiming at something where the enemy is, it's impossible to be at, but it's a point that I can see all the possibilities at the same time. So if he comes out from the right, I just flick. If he comes out from the left, I just flick. If he comes out from here, I flick, or here, and I flick. And there is one case where you should actually aim low, which is if your weapon is going to be blocking your vision. For example, if I aim down sight here, my weapon is going to be blocking this door. So I'm going to aim like this. If I'm aiming without aiming down sight, just from a hip fire, my weapon is going to be blocking this point. So I'm going to aim down like this. That way I can see all the possible spots the enemy can peek from without having anything blocked. That is the only case where you should consider lowering your aim so you can see all the possibilities in front of you. Now, different games have different character models, so the centering is going to be different based on each game and distance. So what I would advise is either hop on with your friends and just get used to aiming at them while they move around or just follow them around. Or just hop into a practice match and practice versus bots. That way you'll get used to the feel of where the head is going to be and where the chest is going to be at different ranges. Online. So a good centering will help you like barely make any adjustments to your aim. So see... I didn't even mean to aim at him and my aim is already towards him. You now having good center will always get your headshots or upper chest shots always on point. So okay, this guy was crouched. <laughs> what? I just got outsmarted by bots guys. Anyways, and now my favorite of all of these exercises, licking. Mastering this skill will always get you at least one noob in the comment section claiming that you are a hacker with their 200 IQ analysis because they saw a snap. Alright, so for flicking, the first exercise that you want to work on is practicing moving your crosshair along a straight line. And when I say straight line, it could be horizontal, it could be vertical, it could be oblique. You should practice doing all of that. So in this case, I'm going to find this straight line. I'm not going to use my ADS because the weapons do sway in COD. So I'm just going to go from the hip fire position and keep that dot on the straight line as much as possible going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now when I'm doing that, I want to start off really slow. The reason I want slow progress is because here we're looking for quality, not quantity. Right? It's better to practice this at a slow rate and slowly get used to going up with it than to actually just go it really fast and let these small micro mistakes like the unnatural habit which we don't want and an oblique line for example like this and one thing after you get used to practicing it practicing different different types of lines i want you to start practicing the same line from different perspectives for example from if i look at it from here it looks like a completely horizontal straight line but if i look at it from here it's gonna look like a kind of more oblique ish type of line now why do i want that when it comes to actual gameplay uh, and you want to flick on different targets or track different targets, you need to, your brain to get used to looking at things from different angles and different perspectives. And doing this is actually going to help a lot. And this is coming from a scientific standpoint. Now, the next exercise you want to start working on is you want to get three, preferably four different points and start aiming at them at a random pace or at an organized pace. For example, I want to go from one, two, three, four, one, two, three three four one two three four now if you notice these are large targets so this counts and this counts you just want to get used to the feel of going from one two three four and getting this snappy feeling you start to understand ah this is how flicks work work on and remember the first exercise about finding your sense this is where i told you you might want to go for a higher sense for this reason to be able to do this more consistently and at this speed now after you get used to Tracking these four targets in an organized way, start going with random interv intervals, like there's no logic about where, which point you're going to. Just make sure that whatever the next target is, you're landing on it. Once you do that on a large scale, start going for a more accurate scale, like let's say these four corners right here. And just practice going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Of course, if you want to put on your music, that will make things even way better and easier for you. And then just going at random intervals. And that's it. Just get used to this. And you'll see your muscle memory getting used to it even more and more. Now as we get used to practicing at different points. You want to start flicking towards your enemies as much as possible. I prefer practicing versus bots. Aim away from the enemy. Shit. 
So what I want to do is actually aim away from them a bit. Where you're aiming away is your point A and then your enemy is point B. I'm just getting, start getting used to that feel of clicking onto people. That works. Oh, I got sniped from the back. I am. As for the third exercise, if you are on PC, I advise downloading Aim Labs, which is free to download on Steam, and going for the various exercises in the flicking category. My personal favorite is the grid shot. One of the most satisfying things you can do in any FPS game is winning a fight where the odds are completely stacked against you. Like turning on an opponent that shot you in the back and still lost the fight. Turn-ons are just basically a combination of a good crosshair placement, the flicking exercises that we just mentioned before, and good reaction speeds. And practicing for them is actually easier than you think as well. Alright, so I want to practice shooting this green sign or the uh, white letters. So after I got used to turning, shooting, turning back, turning, shooting, turning back, I want to start doing it with movement, which is more the realistic case because you're going to be running, somebody's going to shoot at you, and you don't know where they are, and you're going to have to turn on them based on where they're shooting you from. So jump, shoot, jump, look, shoot, jump, look, shoot or all the way to the 180, jump, look, shoot. You don't have to jump, actually. You can just move, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot. And this is actually not just good for turn-ons, but if you think about it, this is a good way for you to like dodge some of the bullets or somebody shooting at you, doing some fakes and going back. I'll be talking more about what fakes are in the movement guide video that I'll be doing really soon. All right, and now let's talk about having aimbot, or the real name of it is recoil control. So what you want to do is get your controller or your mouse and just only touch the shooting button. Don't try to control the recoil and let it go up. Make sure that you have your bullets and impact sprays on in Call of Duty. Call of Duty or other games tend to have the option where you can remove these. You want them for this case right now. So I'm going to come and look at my weapon. It's going to go up a little bit to the left and then start going to the right. Now the logical thing to do is I'm going to pull down and a little bit to the right and then start going a little bit to the left. So it's going to look like something like this. And there's a huge difference between this and that. Now one thing that you want to do actually is instead of forcing yourself to like practice the whole mag at once, it's not a good idea. I would advise going for the five or six bullets at start. If they're all too easy, go for 10 bullets and just see how they look like. So let's say eight bullets look like up and a little bit to the left and then start practicing that. And especially if you're playing multiplayer, that's more than enough because you're going to be dead at that point. And of course, if you need more for Battle Royale, the same principle applies. Start with the first 10 bullets, get used to that, then start going up for more and more. I have a 30 round mag, I keep forgetting. I... And that's it. And of course, if you have affected FOV, bullets will look like you have no recoil, but it's actually still the same recoil pattern. If you put it on independent and aim down sight, it's gonna be way more zoomed in. So when you do that, you're gonna feel like there's more recoil, but it's actually still the same thing. It's all a mental thing. If you just pull down the same exact way, it's gonna look the same way. It's gonna be more shaky because it's more zoomed in. One more thing about controllers is you need to strafe while using your weapon, especially an AR. It will negate any horizontal recoil and it will make rotational aim assist kick in as hard as possible. It will literally make your weapon stick. So once you're shooting at something and practicing at the target or shooting at a, a person in game, strafe by going right and left and your rotational aim assist will kick in. Now, for people like me on mouse and keyboard, this will still help you by negating any horizontal recoil, but you still have to adjust using your mouse by going left if you're going to the right and aiming to the left, to the right if you're moving to the left. But it will still help you. I just like to spam my A and D button and it will negate a lot of the recoil. Like, I barely moved my mouse. I didn't even try to control the recoil this time. That's just by going right and left, but really quick. And last but not least, this is a COD specific thing for recoil control. This game gives you attachments where at some point there's barely any recoil to control. If you can't actually control the recoil after doing that, then you really need to start practicing like the way we did here. Or keep accusing everyone of hacking. Hey, you do you my guy.
And now we're going to talk about tracking. Tracking is basically being able to hit your shots while the target is moving, especially when it's a long range distance fight. So after you got used to the recoil control exercises and moving your crosshair on a straight line exercise, now we're going to start combining them in a way and I'm going to show you how. So over here I found my straight line, but this time instead of moving my crosshair along the straight line and just keeping it with it, I'm going to start shooting while trying to keep it along that line. Now keep in mind when you're moving your aim horizontally, you don't need to worry about any horizontal recoil, you need to worry about the vertical one. So as I'm moving my hand to the right, I'm going to start pulling down so I can negate any vertical recoil. And it's going to look something like this. And I just keep practicing that and making it a habit. And make sure that you practice on different types of straight lines, the same way that we talked about it before. So this time I'm going to be working on an oblique straight line. I'm just focus on the horizontal recoil, I mean the vertical one. one like this. So after you got used to controlling your recoil while moving your crosshair, you want to start trying to track targets and aiming at them while they move. So the best way to do that is to hop onto Battle Royale, DMZ, or a multiplayer match and have your friend move and you want to keep tracking him as he's moving and then try to shoot at him as much as possible. Or do that against bots or my personal favorite is hopping to the firing range and just tracking these targets as they, as they move right and left. And again, if you're on PC, I advise downloading Aim Labs and checking out the tracking category over there. Guys, one important thing that you should keep in mind that Call of Duty and a lot of other games are not hit scan games, which means when you shoot, it doesn't automatically register on the other end instantly like CSGO, for example. What you need to take into consideration is the bullet will drop as the distance grows and there's a certain bullet velocity and certain time for the bullet to go from one side to the other. So when you're tracking a long range distance target, Keep that into consideration so you know that you have to aim ahead and aim a little bit higher than the target is depending on the weapon you're using and the attachments you're using of course you'll get a certain feel to it as you do it more and more often all right guys so those were all the exercises that you need to know and practice in order to have this aim botish aim and i would advise going for anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour per day and you're gonna start seeing results basically after a week or two but don't stop whatsoever this is this should become at least a weekly habit. After you have a really good aim, do them at least once a week just to keep things fresh. I hope this was helpful to you guys and it will help you take your gameplay to the next level. Next up, we're going to be having a broken movement guide that will help you break aim assist in Call of Duty.